Is it just me or do you also think affordable shoes nowadays don't last more than a year? Are your favorite shoes looking worn out, damaged or in need of some TLC? Well, you've come to the right place. I've researched and found you don't have to be a professional shoemaker and craftsman to repair shoes. In fact, I extended the life of my shoes with minimum cost and tools in my own garage. In this series of shoe repair videos, I'll show you how I bring my footwear back to life so I refuse to pay for them again and again. In the second episode of my shoe repair videos, I want to share what I learned about glues. This is glue, strong stuff. After many failed attempts to repair my shoes, I learned the secret that choosing the right glue can make all the difference in the success of your project. Today I will introduce two types of glues I personally use, a contact cement and E6000. We'll also shed some light on why other types of glues such as super glue, epoxy glue or epoxy putty may not be suitable for your shoe repair needs. At the end of the video, I'll have a bonus tip for a unique type of material for fixing badly deteriorated or snapped soles. Let's start with contact cement. Contact cement is the most widely used glue by professional cobblers. It is a versatile adhesive known for its fast drying and strong bonding properties. It works well for shoe repairs involving different materials such as leather, rubber, fabric, EVA. Contact cement forms an instant and permanent bond when the surfaces are pressed together and we can use pressure or tapping with a hammer to make the bond even stronger. Contact cement is perfect for bonding layers of rubber to the shoe sole, just like what I did in my first video. Once the surfaces are pressed together, they stay together. This is a great advantage comparing to other slow cure glues, as the odd shape of shoes make it very hard to hold materials together for a long time. It's hard to hold on to. So instant bonding creates this advantage. Now contact cement has one small problem. It has to be applied to both operating surfaces and after applying, they take about 10 to 15 minutes to dry before the glue can reach its maximum effect. During that 10 to 15 minutes, the two surfaces cannot touch each other. This makes it hard in tight spaces such as cracks around the edge of the sole. Sometimes to fix a cracked sole, a professional cobbler will have to rip off the entire sole and glue it back on. This is where industrial glue such as Shugu or E6000 comes in handy. These two glues are very similar in fact, they are made by the same American company. It's a multi-purpose adhesive that offers flexibility, high strength, and water resistance. E6000 can be used on a wide range of materials, including leather, rubber, metal, and plastic. The only drawback is that it's a slow curing glue that takes about 24 hours to cure. For this reason, it's not very good for gluing large pieces of material which can't be easily clamped together such as a whole shoe sole or a whole heel. For this reason, it's perfect for smaller cracks and gaps, when surface contact during the curing time is unavoidable. After putting on the glue, I would use some painter's tape to hold the glue in place, and life is good. E6000 is transparent or white in color, it is therefore easier to hide the glue stain comparing to the yellowish contact cement when applied on a white pair of shoes. Now why aren't other type of glue suitable for shoe repair? The most common mistake people make is to use super glue. Super glue may provide a strong bond, but it tends to become brittle and can easily crack or break when used on flexible shoe material. It is not designed to withstand the demands of shoe repair. Similarly, epoxy glue is slow curing, which makes it hard to use on shoes. Epoxy glue and epoxy putty also cures into a hard material, which will change the way shoe flexes and will ultimately cause breaks in the rubber or leather. Apart from contact cement and E6000, I came across this genius idea in a video to use a rubber-based adhesive for badly cracked or deteriorated shoe soles. I've put a link to this video below. Although I have not seen this product in my local area, there are similar products used for roof and gutter repairs. Now, if I'm allowed to be more creative, silicone rubber gasket sealers might also work. Rather than using it as adhesive, this product will cure into a rubber-like consistency and become part of the sole. 
Now, I have not tried this myself, but in theory, this should be the kind of fix I would attempt when everything else fails. Potential problems with this product is that it may have a different hardness and flexibility comparing to the original shoe sole. So the shoe may feel different after the repair. In the long term, it may create a weak spot in the shoe structure, which will eventually fail under pressure. Did I miss anything about the different types of shoe glues? If I did, please comment and let me know below. Remember, when repairing your shoes, always follow the manufacturer's instructions and consider the material you're working with. Proper surface preparation and cleaning using proper application techniques is very important and will contribute to the success of your repair. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time in the third episode of my shoe repair video.